A supporter of mine on Patreon, Zach Murphy, noticed something strange while handling helium balloons. If you put one between himself and a distant sound, the sound got quieter. And importantly, it's not something that happens with normal air-filled balloons. So what's going on? My theory is that it's a form of lensing. So you can use a lens to focus light. Light travels as a wave, and in principle, you should be able to focus any kind of wave, so long as you can build the equivalent of an optical lens, in our case, an acoustic lens or a sound lens. And look, these helium-filled mylar balloons, they kind of look like lenses, specifically convex lenses as opposed to concave lenses. But here's the weird thing. In optics, a convex lens focuses light. So if you're looking at a light through a lens, it should appear brighter, so long as you're somewhat near the focal point. Except that's not what's happening with helium. With helium, the sound isn't getting louder, it's getting quieter, which is equivalent to a light getting dimmer when you put a lens in front of it. So there's something more going on. The reason a convex lens focuses light is because glass is more optically dense than air, or it has a high refractive index, to use more formal terminology. When light passes from a low refractive index medium to a high refractive index medium, like from air to glass, the light bends towards this perpendicular line, sometimes called the normal in optics. There's more than one way to explain why light bends in this way, but the intuitive one that I like involves looking at the wavefront. It's important to know that light travels more slowly in a medium with a high refractive index. So look, as the light goes from air to glass, it slows down, and so the peaks and the troughs of the wave need to bunch up a little bit. In other words, the wavelength shortens. If the light comes in at an angle, then this slowing down of light actually changes the angle of the wavefront. And if we assume that light always travels perpendicular to the wavefront, then the direction of travel must change as well. The opposite is true when you go from a high refractive index to a low refractive index medium. In other words, the light bends away from perpendicular, away from normal. So hopefully you can see that the geometry of a convex lens will cause parallel rays of light coming in to bend inwards to a focal point. If you wanted to defocus the light, then you would use a concave lens, and hopefully you can see from the geometry here that that's what you get. So why does a convex sound lens appear to be behaving like a concave optical lens? Why is it spreading out the sound and reducing the volume at any point in space? Well, it's because helium is less acoustically dense than air, which is the opposite of what we have with glass and air, where glass is more optically dense than air, Helium is less acoustically dense than air, so we need to switch the geometry around to get the same effect. So hopefully you can see that here as the rays of sound enter the convex geometry of the balloon, the rays bend away from normal and then they bend towards normal on the way out. Let's test this hypothesis by trying to build a focusing sound lens. We could do that by building a concave helium lens, or we could build a convex lens that's filled with a gas denser than air. The easiest to get hold of is carbon dioxide, so that's what I'm going to use. And the easiest way to supply carbon dioxide is with a fire extinguisher. A quick detour about lens geometry, which is important for the experiment. This surface here is a section of a sphere. So you can imagine a, a big sphere like this, and we've just got a part of it here. And that bottom surface is also a section of a sphere. And the reason the geometry of a lens tends to be spherical is because it's easy to make. Imagine you've got a, a spherical indentation and you've got a rough bit of glass 
and you're grinding it inside that indentation. It doesn't matter how you orient the lens because it's a spherical indentation. That wouldn't be true for other geometries. But it turns out that spherical geometry isn't the perfect geometry to focus light to a point. What you actually want is one surface to be uh, elliptical and the other to be hyperbolic. But for a thin lens like this, it's a pretty good approximation. So spherical geometry is fine, but the lens that I've got is a full sphere and you're gonna end up with something called spherical aberration where you don't get perfect focus. So I also wanted to see if I could create a more traditional lens shape. So I did that with a mylar balloon, but where I reinforced the rim with copper pipe. That's so that it wouldn't become rounded around the edge. If you're wondering how I got the copper pipe in the balloon, I did it like this. To test the lens, I need a source of sound. I use my phone for that and I've got some software that generates white noise and I skewed the white noise towards higher frequencies. That's because for the lens to work, the wavelength of the sound needs to be substantially smaller than the geometry of the lens. That's true for optical lenses as well, by the way. And so anything below about a thousand hertz probably isn't gonna work. A uh, thousand hertz is a wavelength of about 35 centimeters. Ironically, it sounds just like a balloon deflating. I did some rough calculations to figure out the focal length of the lens, just to make sure that I could do the experiment in my garden. Like I wasn't gonna to have to go tens of meters away from the lens to find the focus. And that bit was fine, but to pinpoint the exact focal point, I needed to do some trial and error. With the microphone mounted on the lens, you can hear the moment that I hit the sweet spot, the focal point of sound with my camera. And here it is with the more traditional lens shaped balloon. I actually think the spherical balloon is working better, perhaps because it's larger, so it's gathering more sound. I'm gonna show you the yellow balloon experiment again, this time from the perspective of the handheld camera. And at the same time, I'm gonna show you a frequency analyzer. I'm gonna freeze the frequency analyzer at the low point of amplitude and at the high point of amplitude when we hit the focal point. And there you go, you can clearly see the difference in amplitude. It really does seem to have a lensing effect. For completeness, here's the Mylar balloon filled with helium, and you really can hear the amplitude go down as the sound is defocused. So there you go. Thanks, Zach, for the idea, and thank you to all my patrons on Patreon for your support and your ideas. Here's a question for you. Do you use Chrome browser? Statistically speaking, you probably do. And I used to, but I don't anymore. You might think that switching browsers is a massive pain in the ass, but I wanna explain why it doesn't have to be. And it's really interesting actually. So Chrome is not an open source project, but it's based on an open source core called Chromium. And other people can build browsers based on this open source Chromium. For example, the sponsor of this video, Brave, and the great thing about a Chromium-based browser is Chrome extensions work in Chromium-based browsers. So if you've got your Chrome browser set up just how you like it with all your extensions and everything, you can transfer your extensions, your settings, and your bookmarks over to a browser like Brave in a minute. But why would you switch? Well, Chrome isn't a privacy-based browser. I mean, part of Google's business model is to know as much about you as possible. Brave is a privacy-focused browser. It blocks all that kind of tracking. It blocks fingerprinting. It blocks third-party ads because these third-party ad networks tend to be the ones that are interested in getting to know you and following you around the internet. The upshot is that Brave is faster and it uses less data. There's an 
Android version of the app as well, so you can have everything in sync. It even saves battery on a mobile phone. Go to brave.com forward slash Steve Mould. The link is in the description as well. Normally at this point in a sponsor message, I'd say, hey, get 30% off with the link in the description. But Brave browser is completely free and open source. So I can't say that. All I can say is, yeah, please use that link because that helps me out. It lets them know that I sent you. Download Brave today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.